Hi guys, today I want to show you an experimental project that I've worked on over the weekend. It's something that I thought would be pretty cool. There's a couple little flaws in it that I'd avoid in the future. Uh, I know how to avoid them, but I'm not going to redo the project because it's $40 in paint to do this. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Maybe it's something you'll find interesting. So you can see I've got a couple variations on this here. I did a small tank, I did a large tank. Uh, did a large section of paint here just to try to demonstrate some of the problems with painting on glass, but because the paint had been sitting for a while, it behaved pretty well. Uh, the main things you, you need to work around here are that acrylic paint really doesn't like to stick to glass at all. It just sort of separates out and bubbles out. Uh, this was solid about two minutes ago. Now it just looks like crap. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the ways that I found to avoid this happening while you're working with paints, some of the problems that I ran into with this. Uh, so if you want to do a project like this yourself, you can. So the first thing to know is that acrylic paint really doesn't stick to glass well at all. It sticks far less well once it's been diluted so that it runs. So the first thing you're going to need is some kind of a glass or tile medium. Uh, what I settled on is gloss medium and varnish. And this has dual function. You can put it on the glass. It'll act as a water soluble varnish that the paint can stick to. And I can also use it for thinning the paint itself. So applying this is pretty easy. Just want to make sure you have a nice solid layer. And you want to make sure you get something that is clear. This can leave a lot of bubbles behind and you want to get rid of those, so take a lighter if you've got a torch of some sort. Uh, it doesn't have to be propelled flame, just any flame. And run it along where any of the bubbles are, just to pop them so that you don't have any of them left over later. We'll let that dry. We'll come back when it's done. The next thing we're going to do is just a little bit of a star spat spatter. Uh, to do this, I've got just some regular white acrylic paint, and then I've got some iridescent medium that is not colored. I'm going to dilute it using the gloss medium that I used for the back cover. I'm going to use a little bit of the flow aid that I picked up. I've got the links for all of these things in the description. They're usually significantly cheaper 
on Amazon than if you pick them up locally. So for this, you want it watery. I'm, I'm sorry, you want it runny but not watery. A thin gravy consistency. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip the brush. So I've got just the edges. I'm going to uh, get a little bit of the paint out. I'm just going to smack it on my hand to do some, some depth. This is a bit messy. So if you're someplace where you need to worry about the fact that this is a bit messy, make sure you lay down some newspapers or something. You can see here, it's the finished splatter. Tried to do a few large ones, a lot of smaller ones because nebulas are pretty busy places. I'm going to be putting down the first layer of clouds, and then I'm going to be doing this again over the top of those so that there's more of a three-dimensionality to it. So unfortunately, I lost a lot of the footage that I had for this. I had a couple cameras set up for different angles, and uh, they just didn't work for whatever reason. The footage came out corrupted. Uh, what we're doing at this point is we're taking some of these Josonia iridescent paints and we're mixing them up with the gloss medium and then we're mixing them up with some flow aid so that we get something that's pretty watery. Uh, the first thing that I laid down was just some of the gloss medium and then I'm doing the paints around it so that I have some areas where the paints can't flow because there's clear that gets in the way. Uh, we're trying to alternate the colors a little bit to get a little bit of variance in here. It's hard to see because while they're wet, they all show up as white. Uh, but you just, you get a general pattern, you spread them out into each other with some straws blowing, and then you need to do something around the outside so that you don't have sharp edges. So I do a uh, watery black around this in just a minute, uh, fill in some of the holes with it just to give it a little bit more of uh, a cloudy, murky appearance in the center also. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. The first thing that I ran into when I when I applied this is you can see the edges of my clouds here for my nebula are pretty sharp. And that's a little bit jarring. Uh, and that happened because I put down the color and I let it dry before putting on a background. And that just created some sharp edges here. Whereas over here where it's a little bit more fluid, I had put down some clear around it. Uh, I worked around that with this one by putting down some very watery black around the outer edges. So you can see there's a lot more cloud-like structure in here. Uh, I ended up putting this on a little bit too thickly and I did it on a set on several days where it was just way too low of humidity. So the paint dried way too quickly and I got some cracking here. Uh, I don't like that, but I don't feel like it's worth redoing this because the paint is pretty expensive. Uh, if you're going to do this, you probably want to do pretty watery paint, much more watery than you think you want, and you want to make sure that you have a humidifier or something set up if you live in a dry environment. Otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, this probably wouldn't have happened at all, except that I was stupid and I put a fan on it because I was in a hurry. So the combination of 20% humidity plus the fan just totaled the work. So here's the finished product with uh, a little bit of substrate, some wisteria in the back. The wisteria will probably eventually end up covering most of this within, you know, three weeks. It's it's pretty crazy how fast that grows. But I needed something for these fish because these guys aren't used to anything other than their 20-gallon grow-out tanks they've been in where they can't see anything at all. Uh, they don't even see me when I feed them. They just know that there's food. So they're pretty freaked out because this is a completely new environment, but I've got to get them used to something like a tank before I can pass them on. You can see in the, uh, in the background here, the cracks are, are fairly visible. Again, you know, I'd prefer they not be there. I think if I hadn't put the fan on it, that wouldn't have happened. 
but uh, overall I like the effect. I do think it's it's still got some, you know, depth to it. There's a little bit of a, a 3D appearance where the paint's mixed. Uh, some of the stars that I put on in the background work pretty well. Uh, my light bulbs just died, and that's super cool. Um, honestly, I, I like the way this looks without the light on top of the tank better, but I'm going to need something there for the plants. So, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, I've had a couple ideas for this. One of them is going out and getting some crazy shapes of lava rock and building some otherworldly spires, you know, shooting up around it just to try to make it look kind of like a, you know, an alien world. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do with this. The plants don't have to stay. They're just in there to ease the, the transition for the fish. I've got about two weeks before I'm going to start selling them. So this is just so that they'll get in the habit of being comfortable in what they're eventually going to live in for other people.